All right, on this video, I'm going to show you how to go from scene A to a loading screen to scene B while fading between all of them. The fading part is probably the part that is the non-trivial part, which is why I'm making this video, because it took me kind of a long time to figure out, and I hope that it is more clear now after I make this video. Okay, so if you go to the description, all of the code is in the description. You don't have to pause and copy my code. It's all there. It's all free to use and it works great. So let me show you what I mean now. I'm going to go in. This is my game Boris the Sloth. I'm going to enter this cage and as soon as I enter this cage it's going to load the next scene. Alright so now you're in the loading screen and then it's going to load the next scene after this. Alright so I'm going to just, there's four scripts to cover here, and let me just go through them one by one. All right, so you're going to need four scripts for this whole process to work correctly. The first one is a static script, and you're just going to create it, put it in a folder in Unity. It doesn't need to go on a game object. It just needs to sit there, and it's going to store your next scene and your current scene that you're going to load and unload. So you don't need to put this on a game object. You don't need to modify this. It's just going to do it. The second script is scene load trigger. This is going to be the script that starts the whole process moving. The only variable that it takes as a input is this public string target scene. And when you put this on a game object, target scene is going to be the next scene to load. So if I'm on level 13, target scene is going to be level 14. And then when I call load a scene, it's going to automatically set my scene to load to my target scene it's going to then load the loading screen and start the whole process of doing all of the transitioning the third script is load new scene this is going to go on the loading screen and i'm going to explain this in a second you don't have to modify any of this if you want to change your min load time or something like that i have a variable here for that and that just makes it where you shouldn't you don't really want your load screen to just flash so min load time means that it's going to be guaranteed to be at least five seconds i have some other things here as well and i'll explain that but basically just some text box to provide the user with some data okay the last scene the last script you're going to need is just this, the script where the player enters a box collider, it starts, it's like recognizes that the player entered and it starts the loading process. The most important part of this is the scene load trigger dot load a scene. That's actually the part that is, it's like the trigger that starts the loading sequence. And the rest of it is just kind of preference stuff. So now I can show you how all of the scripts are actually implemented in game objects. All right, so in my game, I have a game object called in level zone loader. This is the game object that when my player enters, it starts the loading sequence. So attached, I have a box collider 2D set to is trigger. And I have two scripts attached, two of the ones I discussed. Scene load trigger and in level zone loader. Scene load trigger. For target scene, you're going to put the scene that you want to load to. So this is level 13. When my player enters this zone, I want to load level 14. So I put level 14 here. And level 14 is the exact name of the scene here. Okay. So the next script is the end level zone loader script that I just talked about. You just need to attach it. If you look at the code, it already handles how uh, to sequence things when you enter this box. Um, you're not going to need to add anything to scene load trigger here. You can leave it blank. It's going to auto populate all of that stuff. And the wait time load, I'm using 3.5 seconds, but that's just um, for sequencing for my particular game. I want the player to enter. I want him to pause. I want it to wait three and a half seconds. And then I want it to start the sequence of fading in and fading out. I think it looks more dramatic, so that's why I kind of did it. That's all you need for going from scene 13 to scene 14. 
Now, I'm going to go to my loading screen. You're going to need a scene called loading screen, exactly loading screen. And the reason why is because I've hard-coded in to my uh, script to look for a scene called loading screen when loading. So let me just go to this. So on your loading screen, let me zoom out so you can see my loading screen. This is what it looks like. For my particular loading screen, I have loading dot dot dot, and those dots are animated. I got the loading screen percentage here, which auto updates based on where the scene is loaded, how much of it is loaded. So now that's out of the way, I have a game object called next scene loader. And on that game object, I have the load new scene script. And for my particular game, I have uh, text mesh pros for a few things. Again, the loading, the percent, and the slot fact. So I have that here, loading, percent, slot fact. And that's because I'm updating these from script as I'm running. One really important thing is this canvas group, which is this canvas group here. That canvas group controls the fading out of the load screen after loading the level 14. So if I'm going from level 13 to level 14, that canvas group is going to help me fade out the loading screen when I get to level 14 and I'm ready to play. And I'll show you why. Because that canvas group has an alpha channel on it, and that alpha channel can fade out. And once it's faded to zero, I just unload the loading screen scene. I hope that's helpful. All of the step-by-step -step text instructions are in the description, and all of the scripts are in the description. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll do my best to answer them. But I hope this helps with Unity learning how to fade between scenes because it took me a week of work and it was a pain in the butt and I don't want you to have to go through that.